following program is sponsored by CBN. Today, she's painted the president. I am a painter and I love it. And she's inspired fans across the country. People will say, I felt the Holy Spirit when you were painting. Now see why she once put down her brush. I remember the shame, feeling like nobody even cared. And how she discovered her true calling. I know that I am loved by God. Today on The 700 Club. Well, welcome to The 700 Club. Student teachers from a Christian university are now banned from a public school system, all because of their university's biblical mission statement. And that's the decision made by an Arizona elementary school district. The school board voted unanimously to cancel its contract with Arizona Christian University after an LGBT member raised concerns. Their action was quickly followed by outrage over religious discrimination and the threat of a multi-million dollar lawsuit. Charlene Aaron reports. For the past 11 years, Arizona Christian University and Washington Elementary School District had a partnership where ACU students could student teach in the district's public schools. Weeks ago, that relationship ended when the school board cut ties because of the university's biblical beliefs on marriage and sexuality. While I full-heartedly believe in religious freedom and people being able to practice whatever faith that they have, I had some very concerned concerns regarding looking at this particular institution. In February, the five-member Washington Elementary School Board voted unanimously to not renew the student-teacher contract with Arizona Christian University. Though she said she supports religious freedom, LGBTQ board member Tamila Valenzuela took issue with the school's mission statement, which includes providing a biblically integrated education. How does that hold space for our members of the LGBT community? How does that hold space for people who think differently and do not have the same beliefs? That makes me feel like I could not be safe in this, in this school district. On CBN's Global Lane, ACU spokesperson Linnea Lighting expressed shock over the district's decision. Arizona Christian University students have been working with Washington School District for over 10 years, and all of the feedback I've gotten has been positive. In fact, they've asked for more of our students to come. The Alliance Defending Freedom is representing ACU in a lawsuit against the school district. The government cannot treat people of faith worse than everyone else. These students should not lose opportunities and be punished you know, merely because of their religious beliefs. That's a blatant example of religious discrimination. At a recent board meeting, members of the community voiced outrage over the district's move. Out of the dozens of practicum students I have had throughout my WESD teaching career, 16 of them have been from ACU. All 16 have had glowing reviews in regards to their instruction, strategies, and connections made with all students. Never at any time did our students feel unsafe or attacked, ever. You are setting a precedent through the state of Arizona that discrimination towards Christians is allowed. Others argued the board's decision could cost the district millions of dollars. I mean, we talk about hurting the children. That hurts. Meanwhile, Tucker says two board members have doubled down on their position, but the ADF is prepared to take the case through the appeals system to protect the school's freedoms of speech and religion. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Well, this is just seemingly uh, another in a long series of um, cases where it's okay to discriminate against Christians in the public square. Uh, for this to go through and be voted on unanimously by the school board, none of the other school board members taking a stand for religious freedom, uh, none of them recognizing what is clearly stated in the Constitution, there shall be no religious test. If you, if you run for office, there can never be a religious test. So as a school board member with that protection, why wouldn't you extend that same protection to the people that work in the school district? 
You have to have religious freedom. You have to have freedom of conscience. You have to have freedom of speech. You have to have all of these freedoms in order to maintain a democracy. And you can't have one group say, well, my feelings are hurt by your beliefs, even though it's, it's just something I read in your mission statement. It's just absolutely incredible what is happening in our country today. This is going to be litigated. We will await the court's decision. My prediction is the court's going to come down and say this is a clear case of religious discrimination. Uh, you've targeted their religious beliefs. You were quite open in doing that. Uh, and this needs to stop. But unfortunately, it's not going to stop because whether you're a baker in Colorado or a student teacher in Arizona, it seems like it's open season on you, that they can continue to discriminate against you. And even when courts tell them to stop, they continue doing it. In other news, yesterday a heated debate broke out on Capitol Hill over parents' rights and education. John Jessup has that story from the CBN Newsroom. John? That's right, Gordon. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill right here in Washington held hearings dealing with free speech at school board meetings and a GOP bill that would give parents more oversight on classroom materials, including what books should be allowed in school libraries. CBN's Jenna Browder reports. A fiery day on Capitol Hill in hearings debating parents' rights in the classroom. Republicans say it's about increasing transparency. Democrats, though, call it censorship and say it pits parents against teachers. Republicans taking action in response to angry parents speaking out at school board meetings over materials in public schools. Obviously, some Democrats today want to silence parents who disagree with their woke agenda to indoctrinate American children with controversial and inappropriate curricula. The GOP's Parents' Bill of Rights requires schools post curriculum and respect free speech at school board meetings. Republicans focused on a DOJ memo targeting parents for acting out at school board meetings. This is what domestic terror looks like. This is not a school board meeting. There is no hotline for any of these rights, and we are going to have a hotline that's going to report parents for caring about their children's education. The bill's most divisive point, a requirement that schools list books in libraries. Democrats accuse Republicans of wanting to censor history. This state-mandated censorship does not protect students. Instead, these legislative efforts will likely harm students teachers, and the quality of public education. We do not serve the interests of students when we shield them from the truth, as uncomfortable as the truth may be at times. Sarah Parshall Perry with the Heritage Foundation says the movement is parent-driven. The parents have found their voices and that COVID has given us a new perspective on exactly what our students, what our children are learning at the grassroots level, what they're being taught. And many of those concepts are not only divisive, we're seeing books now included in school libraries that are outright pornographic in violation of longstanding obscenity laws. I hope they're successful in banning a number of books. The question is, which are those books? Are those books, for example, uh, genderqueer, a memoir, that book, or this book is gay? In that book, there are all sorts of depictions, depictions with body parts and male body, body parts. I can't even put on the screen the stuff that is in this book, genderqueer, where there's two men uh, engaged in a sexual position. Another uh, page where I can flip to where there's two men engaged in oral sex. Another uh, picture here in which there are uh, any number of uh, ridiculous uh, graphic pictures that are being put in front of our kids in schools. And the House votes today on the Parents' Bill of Rights Act. If it passes, though, it faces an uphill battle in the Senate. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News. Thank you, Jenna. Now to a new report that shows violent attacks and hateful rhetoric against Jews in the United States reached an all-time high last year. Anti-Semitic attacks uh, jumping 36% in 2022, according to data from the Anti-Defamation League. Some 3,700 incidents were reported across the country. The year also saw a dramatic rise in white supremacist propaganda 
along with increases in harassment, vandalism, and physical assaults against Jewish people and places of worship. Well, in the Middle East, American forces launched precision airstrikes in Syria today after an attack by suspected Iranian-made drone killed a U.S. contractor and wounded five American troops and another contractor. The U.S. strike, targeting facilities used by groups affiliated with Iran's Revolutionary Guard, and reportedly killed at least four people. Well, for hundreds of years in Israel, archaeologists have made historic discoveries in the city of David. Now a site that's well known for one of the most famous miracles in the New Testament is being uncovered for the world to see. CBN's Chris Mitchell takes us to the Pool of Siloam. Located at the bottom of the city of David is the Pool of Siloam, one of the most important places in ancient Jerusalem. This is a site where all of the Jewish people would gather three times a year for Pentecost, Tabernacles, and Passover to immerse, spiritually cleanse themselves before the pilgrimage up to the temple. These steps were uncovered in 2004, but when the pool is fully excavated on the other side of this wall, it will mark the first time in modern history when the Pool of Siloam has been fully excavated and open to the public. So now there is a groundbreaking. We are really in historic times. We are finally able to excavate. Our tractors have started excavating the Pool of Siloam, meaning in a short, I mean, I hope, a short year, two years, we'll be able to come here and see the full Pool of Siloam in its entirety. This video shows what the pool might have looked like as Jews purified themselves and walked up to the temple. The Bible explains how King Hezekiah built the pool in Chronicles and 2 Kings. Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah, all his might and how he made a pool and a tunnel and brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? The book of John describes how Jesus healed the blind man near the pool. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Waysman says the pool links the people of the Bible. All of the biblical stories, you want to meet David and Solomon, Hezekiah, the kings, the stories of Isaiah, of Jeremiah, they're here. And this is the, literally the water system, the life source of that Jerusalem. She adds how this project also makes the connection to the people of today. We are here in Jerusalem, Jerusalem that unites the whole world. Everywhere you go in this world, people are focusing on what's happening in Jerusalem. This is the uniting city. While we're living and creating and innovating in Jerusalem today, at the same time, here at the Pool of Siloam, we're now able to uncover what used to unite us in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. The excavation is the fulfillment of a dream for the people who work at the City of David. The dream and what we're actually turning into reality here at the City of David is to finish excavating the Pool of Siloam and be able to have millions of people come from all faiths and backgrounds, visit the Pool of Siloam, be able to walk up the original pilgrimage road to the temple. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to see that, that dream realized. Chris Mitchell, the Pool of Siloam, the city of David. Familiar stories from the Bible being brought to life. Gordon, back to you. It's amazing the dimensions of this pool. Uh, I first got associated with, in producing Superbook, we were looking at biblical models and how to portray the city of Jerusalem during the time of Jesus, and I was amazed how big it was. And then one of our experts explained, well, and just imagine three million people going up to the temple for the, the festivals, whether that's Passover or um, you know, uh, the Day of Atonement, all of these things, they needed to go through the Pool of Siloam. They needed to have that. And, and that's why the size is just, it's, it's immense. So it's wonderful that it's being uncovered, uh, hidden for so long. I remember sitting on those steps and thinking, this is kind of small, but then when you see just exactly how big it is, you go, this is going to be a, a monumental project and what will be uncovered along with it as they look at the, the foundation here? What are they going to find that's going to go all the way back to the time of Jesus and even back to the time of Hezekiah? The Pool of Siloam was the purest water. That's the, the rabbinical tradition. It was fed by the, the tunnel of Hezekiah, which goes down to a spring at the base of Mount Zion. This is the place where the kings of Israel 
would be anointed and they would be uh, commissioned to be king over all of Israel because it's the purest water coming from the very source of Zion. It's amazing to see it. It's amazing to go there. And as you get these things uncovered over time, every time you turn over a stone in Israel, you find God's word written in that stone. How accurate the Bible is as a history, how accurate the descriptions are, it's amazing what's coming out of Israel today. Terry? What's your appetite for a trip? Terry it? wants to go. Oh, any day, any time, <laughs> let me just say. <laughs> well, coming up, like being tackled by an NFL lineman over and over again. That's how this personal trainer described his ongoing battle with COVID-19. See how a random message on TV becomes his lifeline and leads to an Easter miracle. Plus, Gordon and I are going to be praying for you. That's later on today's show. Up next, with one or two suitcases and no money, thousands of Ukrainian refugees keep flooding into Israel. Find out who's helping them get settled in their new homeland after this. Hi, I'm Beth Parkinson. Here at CBN Europe, we've seen the toll this year has taken on so many people. People are struggling with discouragement, missing community, and most of all, needing hope. Our CBN Europe team have put together a resource especially for you. You can head to cbneurope.com forward slash hope right now and find over 15 different articles written by the CBN Europe office, including our regional director, Mark Dykins, as well as articles from Terry Mewson and Gordon Robertson. You'll find topics on navigating loss, finding peace, healing or redemption and hope for many circumstances, plus Bible verses and prayers written just for you. And if you don't have easy access to the internet, you can call our Hope Line today to receive a limited edition printed version of the magazine called Let Hope Arise. Go to cbneurope.com forward slash hope today to get your free online copy or call our CBN Hope team on 0300 561 0700 if you'd like to receive one of these limited edition printed copies. From all of us here at CBN Europe, thanks for watching. God bless you and keep you. Before you were born, before the foundation of the world, you existed in God's mind, and he knew that the world would need you right now. Divine Direction, God's Blueprint for Your Future. The latest audio teaching from Gordon Robertson. You have unique abilities, a unique purpose. When God looks at you, he's looking at you through eyes of destiny. Divine Direction, God's blueprint for your future. Available now. Next week, how to reverse memory loss and reduce your risk of Alzheimer's. Dr. Don Colbert shares how you can get into the healthy brain zone and healed at Asbury. I just felt this tingling in my hands and my feet and my whole body. One family travels 10 hours to witness a revival and receives a miracle. I can't be the same after I've encountered a genuine touch from the Lord. Monday on the 700 Club. When Russia invaded Ukraine, thousands of Jews fled the fighting and immigrated to Israel. So far, more than 50,000 Ukrainians and Russians have made Aliyah. Many of them had mixed emotions upon arriving in their new country. And Julie Stahl brings us this firsthand look. 90 new immigrants from Ukraine and Russia arrived here on this flight from Chisinau, Moldova, chartered by the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Some couldn't come earlier because they had sick loved ones in Ukraine. My father died earlier, and then my grandpa was sick and bedridden. We wanted to go to Israel, but the doctors told us that he wouldn't survive the journey to get the medical treatment there. My mother left, and now we're going. Waiting at the airport in Chisinau, some had mixed emotions. Well, I'm happy because I'll see my family, my loved ones. My mother, my sisters, my sons and granddaughters are already there. 
But at the same time, it's very sad for me because my wife stayed in Ukraine. Her mother is old. She is not able to leave for now. And on the other hand, my mother has been in Israel for 30 years already. She's almost 101. Some came from Russia. We are very happy to visit the historical homeland of my husband to show our son the land of his forefathers. During the first 10 months of the war, close to 40,000 Russians and 15,000 Ukrainians came to Israel. In the beginning, there was people that just ran out from the fire. They saw the tanks, they filled the fires. They didn't know what was going to happen. There was a feeling that everything is going to fall down and Ukraine will be Russia in five days, and they just run away. Benny Haddad is with the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews that helped about 5,000 Ukrainian refugees make the trip from Moldova. They have one packet with their documents, taking kids in their hands, no clothes, nothing at all, and we need to give them everything. This was the beginning. And a year later, they're still coming. They are not trying away. They are planning something. They're coming here with suitcase, one or two. Uh, they cannot sell the homes or the cars. They have no money. But they have their things with them. And they have some plan where are we going to be in the beginning. They have some information. Still, it wasn't an easy decision. I have two countries. One country of my parents, of my uh, family, and one of my soul. It's. Israel and Ukraine. Katerina initially stayed to finish her degree in chemistry. Now she and her two cats are joining her parents and brother in Beersheba, Israel. On New Year's Eve, it was rocket missiles by Russians. Near my house, it was 100 meters. And my university, my alma mater, was bombed. It is no windows now. And uh, it is no place to study to our student. Elena Shevchenko is leaving the chaos of war to be with her children and grandchildren. This whole year I haven't been able to come to my senses. When you stand in your own home and all the walls and windows are shaking and you don't understand what for, why this is happening. When our children, our neighbors in the village are dying and you don't understand the reason for it. Why is it so? For 76-year-old Lev Viknyansky, it will be like a family reunion because his wife, son and daughter and their families are in Israel. It's been a year since I saw them, but before the war I visited Israel 17 or 18 times. It's my second country. I couldn't leave what we have accumulated over the years. I need to pass it on to somebody. We had a business, we had a home, we had cars, we had everything to live comfortably and visit Israel five times a year. And then, on a blustery day, they were home. I made my decision about Aliyah just 10 days ago, and I'm here to support my son, a student of Nalia program, and I'm happy to stay here, and I hope that in the future I, I'll be able to repay Israel for support, for kindness. Tears of joy that I came to my children to see them and that everything will go well here. I'm very happy that I made it here to my homeland. I always feel good, especially when I come to my land, the land of my forefathers. That's why I can't feel bad. It may not be easy for these newcomers, but they have the assurance that they have come home, as the prophet Amos said, never to be uprooted again. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Chisinau, Moldova, and Ben Gurion Airport, Tel Aviv. Well, this is wonderful to see fulfillment of biblical prophecy as the Jews come home. All of those that were exiled, and you look at the numerous exiles from the Holy Land, the, the great ones were Babylon and then Assyria, and then after the destruction of the temple in AD 70, and then Hadrian uh, in 135, the destruction that the Romans did. And, and you look at how they were spread across the globe, and now they're coming home. And it's generational. Uh, I remember my father linking arms with International Fellowship of Christian Jews um, back in the 1970s for something called Operation Exodus to take Russian Jews and take them to Israel. And now here we are a generation later in Yael and I working together, people working together to say, how can we make it possible? How can we be part of God's plan? Because when you see it in the, in the prophets, it's quite clear 
modern Israel is going to come to be. Can a nation be born in a day? And yes, it was. It was born in a day, but it took thousands of years for it to come into being. The fulfillment is now right in front of us. And the prophet Amos, they will never be uprooted again. Terry? Well, up next, she speed paints at events all across the country. This acclaimed artist has even painted a president. Find out what drove her to put down her paintbrush for eight years and see who encouraged her to pick it back up again. And then also ahead, a nonstop headache pounding like a sledgehammer, along with every breath taken like inhaling glass. COVID takes down this personal trainer. See how he rises up again. That's later on today's 700 Club. Superbook at the Big Church Day Out brought fun and laughter to hundreds of kids and their families, teaching them how to have a courageous, adventure-filled life with Jesus. Glitter Time, the big Superbook show, and dance-offs with Gizmo, it was a weekend never to forget. Bring the festival fun home with you and download the app today. With Superbook episodes, games, and activities, you can make an exciting walk of faith part of daily life for you and your kids, sharing Bible time together. Superbook reaches millions of kids in over 80 countries and over 50 languages, with more being added all the time. Become part of the worldwide Superbook family and help us reach even more kids with the life-changing good news of the gospel. Free to download, free to use. Download the app today. I was told for so many years by my dad that I was worthless, that I was no good. I did not like myself very much at all. And I started asking God to help me. I heard this voice say to me, can you forgive? And then I said, I can forgive. In that moment, I found everything I was looking for. He will transform your life like you wouldn't believe. Today, Vanessa Orabuena captivates audiences across the country with her powerful speed painting events. Yet her career as an artist almost never happened. For years, Vanessa lived in a lonely and troubled life, and she even tried to end it by suicide. I remember the shame, extreme loneliness and depression, feeling like nobody even cared. I didn't know what it was like to have a, a day without feeling that loneliness and abandonment. Vanessa Orbuena is an accomplished artist and speed painter who works to inspire hope and positivity through her passion for painting. However, her life growing up was anything but positive. Vanessa longed for a genuine relationship with her mother. She was dealing with the grief of losing her mom, which was really hard on her. And then also her and my father's relationship was not so great. She was a little more checked out, just emotionally not present. I had a hard time believing I was loved. Well, I'd watch other um, parents with their children, and I'd remember thinking, wow, like I wish that was how my mom was with me. The pain Vanessa felt was only compounded when at five years old, she suffered sexual abuse at the hands of certain family members. I had a really, really low self-esteem. It affected my view of men in a major way. I felt very um, on guard with men. The abuse was kept secret and continued periodically for years. Vanessa's trauma eventually turned into anger as she started lashing out at her parents and getting into fights at school. Out of desperation, her mother sent Vanessa to a Christian youth camp when she was 13. There, she experienced the love of Jesus Christ. The first thing that really hit me was the, the encouragement. I just really responded very well. And I was like, wow, this is like, I feel like God's people are amazing. And if this is what God is like, this is what, I mean, I just love him. I gave my life to the Lord and totally came back a different person. Vanessa stopped fighting and put her energy into learning more about God. 
her passion for art also developed during this time. Inspired by an older sister in cartoons like The Lion King, Vanessa started drawing. I would feel centered. Um, so it was just a very, very personal, peaceful experience, um, expressing um, how I was feeling or um, things that I really enjoyed through art. Just as Vanessa's attitude and morale began to improve, her home life took a turn for the worse. Her father was caught in an extramarital affair and her mother left the house as a result. The split hurt Vanessa deeply. It was very difficult for me. I had this relationship with God and yet I was, you know, struggling with depression and I attempted suicide at the age of 16. I felt a sense of hopelessness. Vanessa survived her suicide attempt and then went to live with various family members and friends. In spite of everything, she still loved God and eventually got involved in local outreach ministry. That's when the emotional and sexual trauma of her past began to turn into something else. I hit a rock bottom where I just was like, I need to get counseling. So I went to counseling with one of my senior pastors. I started to understand just by talking to him where things were coming from for the first time. The pastor reminded Vanessa of God's endless love and compassion. I realized that, that God was, was gentle and kind and that he was gonna walk me through it. It was amazing because I didn't leave feeling, you know, shame. I left feeling, feeling empowered and like free. I felt light. She was also encouraged to pick up her art again and not just drawing, but to try painting as well. So I went home and I set up my easel, I set up my paints, and in two and a half hours, I had finished my first painting. I loved it. So yeah, that's how that, that gift just came flowing back into my life. I was like, I am a painter and I, I love it. She also reconciled with her parents who restored their marriage and became born again Christians. For the past nine years, Vanessa has pursued a successful career as an artist, painting Christ themed pieces. She speed paints at events across the country while listening to worship music. Vanessa says it was only God who was able to heal her wounds and give her life purpose. He's brought me through. I no longer you know, have the same struggles that I used to. I know that I am loved by God. To be in His will, to be in relationship with the Lord is to me the ultimate fulfillment in life. When I worship God, it's my relationship with God on display, basically. People will say, I felt the Holy Spirit when you were painting. I could never thank the Lord enough for all that he's done. But every day I do the best that I can to just love on him and show him that. She is remarkably talented and what an amazing testimony. You know, you can love God and still struggle with many things in your life. The great thing is God's love is bigger than that and his desire is to free you from anything that keeps you from wholeheartedly surrendering to him. He's so good, he's worthy of your trust and your thanksgiving even before you see the victory, but know that his heart is for you. Gordon? Well, still ahead, a knock on the door followed by the delivery of flowers. Well, that's how this addicted mother found out her husband was trying to get full custody of their child. Watch how it became a wake-up call for her to get the help she needed. Plus, a fever of 103 for 11 straight days. Shortness of breath, tightness in his chest. This fitness trainer was confined to a hospital bed. See how he found the faith to keep fighting COVID. Coming up. I want to discuss with you three important questions. The answers to which will determine the course of your life. Where do you come from? Who are you? Where are you going? Divine Direction, God's blueprint for your future. The latest audio teaching from Gordon Robertson. What does it really mean to be a child of God? What does it really mean to belong to God? What does it really mean that I'm going to God? In this teaching, you'll discover God's design for your life, your true identity in Christ, 
how to find purpose and direction, plus a daily devotional to strengthen your faith. When God looks at you, he's saying, you're exceptional. You are here for the very purpose that I thought of before the foundation of the world. When you have that picture of yourself, it changes everything. Divine Direction, God's Blueprint for Your Future, available now. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream, the chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities, the chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? Welcome back to Washington for the CBN News Break. Newsmax is back on DirecTV after the two companies signed a multi year deal. The agreement follows a public battle over satellite TV providers' decision to drop the conservative news channel earlier this year. While DirecTV cited carrier fees for the move, Newsmax's CEO uh, told CBN News he believes his channel was targeted because it's a conservative news outlet. Troy Miller, president and CEO of the National Religious Broadcasters, issued a statement saying the group is delighted Newsmax is returning to DirecTV. Well, CBN's Operation Blessing is providing quality medical care for those in need around the world. Sylvia and her husband Roger live in a remote community in Peru, about an hour away from the nearest city and health center. So even the most minor medical problem could become a major issue. Operation Blessing was able to establish a health center in their community, so when both of Sylvia's boys got sick, they received immediate care. Now they're healthy and a grateful Sylvia thanked Operation Blessing for providing the facilities for health care. Well, you can find out more about Operation Blessing by visiting ob.org. Gordon and Terry will be back with more today's 700 Club right after this. Do you receive Reach Magazine? Reach Magazine is filled with powerful testimonies of how God is changing lives through CBN all across the world. You can read inspiring teachings from Pat Robertson to challenge you and to help you grow in your faith. You'll also receive important CBN ministry updates about projects that are happening right here in the UK and across Europe. This bi-monthly magazine is free. All you need to do is go to cbneurope.com slash reach to request yours today. You can also view our Reach magazine online. So log on and order your copy today. Thank you and God bless you. Like most drug addicts, Rachel paid a high price for her habit. She even lost custody of her daughter. Today, Rachel is drug free and reunited with her child. And she says it's all because of you. Rachel has a passion for helping the drug addicted find freedom. Not so long ago, she needed that freedom herself. After years of addiction, she heard a knock on the door. And I didn't know who these people were. And I was just like, oh, OK, thanks. And like, who's sending me flowers? And it really, it was just their ploy to have you open the door so that they could serve you papers. And I ended up getting served. My ex-husband was going to do an emergency junction to take full custody of my daughter. And I knew at that point I needed to get a different kind of help than I had ever received. Rachel enrolled in the Faith Home, an 18-month rehabilitation program run by the Lighthouse Gospel Mission, which is a partner of Operation Blessing. The Bible started coming alive. It wasn't just a story that I was reading anymore. It was me in that story and how Jesus saved me. During rehab, Rachel received food provided by Operation Blessing. But to have that freedom of not being able to worry about how am I going to get this week's groceries while you're there, you just focus on your relationship with the Lord. 
That helped her experience the breakthrough and healing she needed. Well, then I started to believe that maybe restoration with my daughter could happen. Maybe it would be where someday she could come and, and be with me, you know, because at that point, that would be a miracle. Rachel graduated from the program, got remarried, and became the Faith Homes Women's Supervisor. It's an honor to be able to every day show these ladies the freedom that the Lord gives you. And God restored her relationship with her daughter. My God's promises are yes and amen. She comes here now every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, every spring break. She's here six weeks in the summer. Every day after school, she calls me and I do her homework over FaceTime and I'm her mom. Through your generous giving, many people like Rachel get the support they need while they recover and heal. To everybody that is giving to Operation Blessing, I personally can't thank you enough, and I just ask that you continue to bless Operation Blessing with any means that you can, because I know for me, my life was worth it, and my daughter's life is worth it, and the women in the faith home, their lives are worth it, and it's all because of you. The great news is those lives and your life are worth it to God as well. And so no matter how broken any of us are, no matter how broken our loved ones might be, God is the restorer. And he doesn't just bring us back to wholeness like he did for Rachel, but he also restores what our petition to him is. For her, it was wanting to have a relationship with her daughter again. You know, God can do that. He can do the impossible for us. But first and foremost, he wants to heal us and bring us close to himself. 700 Club members, you are doing that in the lives of people in this country and all around the world. And that message, of God as Savior and Redeemer goes out with every bit of work that we do. So we say thank you. Listen, join the 700 Club, the rest of you, if you haven't, then we've got a great gift for you when you do join. It's Gordon's latest teaching, Divine Direction, God's Blueprint for Your Future. We have had such an amazing response to this. This is a message that came to us from a viewer, Vincent. He lives in Platte City, Missouri. He said, thank you so much, Gordon. Divine Direction is your most powerful teaching to date. I've been been a Christian for over 65 years. This spoke to me and reminded me of how much God loves us all. That is a message we all need to be reminded of. I want to say thank you to those of you who are members of the 700 Club and tell those of you who are joining today, Divine Direction is our gift to you when you call now. 1-800-700-7000. Just call and say, I want to join the 700 Club. We'll get your gift out to you right away. Gordon? Well, up next, an invisible enemy, greater than any opponent he'd ever faced before. That's how this personal trainer described the smackdown he suffered from COVID. Stay tuned to see how the power of prayer helped him to heal, and then we'll be praying for you and your needs. So stay with us. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. My latest teaching is about you and where you come from. More importantly, where are you going? In this teaching, you'll discover three of life's biggest questions. How you answer these very important questions can hold the keys to your future. In Gordon Robertson's latest audio teaching, Divine Direction, you'll discover the keys to a fulfilling life, what it means to be a child of God, how to correct negative self-talk, plus a daily devotional to strengthen your faith and so much more. God has uniquely made you. You're the only one of you in all of human history. You are the only one to accomplish the mission that he has specifically crafted you to fulfill. I hope this teaching will encourage you to go for God's best. Get Divine Direction, available now. When you give, smiles grow bigger. When you care, homes are happier. When you comfort, the hurt goes away. When we all come together to love, miracles happen.
Well, Dan is a tough guy, yet this personal trainer was no match for COVID-19. Dan was hospitalized with the virus on Palm Sunday. And here's what happened to him in the hospital. It led to an Easter miracle. I battled sicknesses in the past, but nothing like this invisible enemy, this opponent much greater than any I'd ever faced before. Mid-March 2020, New York City was in a panic. Seemingly overnight, the coronavirus had evolved from a breaking news headline to a citywide crisis. For personal trainer Dan Venezia, it was unlike anything he'd ever seen. My body hurt to the touch. It felt as if I was being you know, repeatedly tackled by an NFL lineman over and over again. I thought I had given myself a really tough workout, but then it was to the point where I could barely move. In the days that followed, other symptoms began to manifest. To keep his wife and two sons safe, Dan quarantined himself and prayed for the best. 11 straight days, I had a fever of 103 degrees, nonstop headache, pounding like a, a sledgehammer in my head, shortness of breath, tightness in my chest. If I tried to take in a deep breath, it was as if I was inhaling broken glass. I'm praying every day that, you know, this is not a serious thing and that I can break it and I can beat it. But after nearly two weeks of worsening symptoms, Dan knew what it meant. A COVID test at a nearby urgent care confirmed it. Dan was positive. I said goodbye right here, right at this counter to my wife of 22 years and my two teenage boys, not knowing if I'd return home to them. On the morning of Palm Sunday, Dan checked himself into the hospital where doctors diagnosed him with pneumonia. Later that night, his fever spiked to 104 and his O2 levels plummeted below 90. It was the worst night of my life. And this disease, this virus, uh, was greater than any opponent I've ever faced before. It, it knocked me out physically. I wanted to escape. I wanted to rip the IV out of my arm and the oxygen out of my nose. Confined to that hospital bed with no one by his side for support, Dan became overwhelmed. The television was on and it was spewing out the death toll numbers. And uh, they were showing overcrowded funeral homes. They were showing uh, morgues and, and nursing homes. And I was questioning God and I was thinking about not being there uh, to send my boys off to college and not being there for their weddings. And I went in as a man of faith, but I began to question the very existence of God and his will. Then, through the words of the late American nun, Mother Angelica, Dan found the faith to keep fighting. My eyes were closed and I hit the channel up button by mistake. And it was Mother Angelica saying the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, the words that Jesus taught us. And I prayed alongside with her for 30 minutes or so, giving me that spiritual food that I needed for my soul. And Dan wasn't alone in his prayers. For that same night, more than 5,000 church members from Dan's cathedral tuned in to a virtual service to pray for his recovery. COVID may have taken over physically and mentally, but it was no match for the power of prayer. I had former teammates sending prayer chains across the country parents from the high school that my boys attend having prayer sessions. Uh, and when I tell you that I could feel those prayers, uh, I knew there was no doubt that I would beat this disease. The very next day, his fever broke. For Dan, it was evidence of God at work. Jesus Christ was the best doctor that I had, and the best medicine I was given was prayer. I was so set on the mission on getting home to my wife and my boys, and I knew that Jesus was there with me every step of the way. His body quickly recovered and his breathing improved. By that Thursday, just four days after being admitted to the hospital, Dan was cleared for release. And as they wheeled me out, it, I had a pain-free awakening at that moment. It, it was as if God had let out a subtle yet powerful exhale. And I took in a breath for the very first time in two weeks that did not hurt. That Easter Sunday, Dan celebrated the miracle of Jesus' resurrection and the miracle of his healing. It was a very different Easter than any others that I've experienced because this is like getting another, another shot at life. COVID had ravaged my body, had taken over my mind, 
But the one thing I did not let it break was my spirit. Since that Easter, Dan shares his story with anyone in search of hope for healing. More than ever, he is grateful for the life God has given him here on earth and eternally. The first thing I do is take in a deep breath. I'm so blessed, I, I won't say lucky, I am blessed to be able to share my story, this testimony with others in an effort to provide them with hope that there's a God out there that genuinely cares, a powerful God that lends his hand healing and restoring. Uh, it's the greatest love story ever told. The fact that Jesus rose for you and for me so that we shall not perish but have eternal life, that just warms my soul. It was a special Easter. As we prepare for the Easter season, as we prepare for Palm S Sunday, as we prepare for Easter morning, the morning of resurrection, let us look to Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the mediator between God and man. He gave of his own body and in the Last Supper said, take, eat of it. This is my body broken for you. This is the blood of the new covenant. It's through his sacrifice that we get to be partakers of the divine nature. And in that partaking, we get to have the same privilege that we get to go to God and say, our Father. We get to have that same privilege that Jesus had, direct communion with the Father and to ask him for things. Within the churches that follow liturgy, and whether that's Greek Orthodox, um, Byzantine Rite, or the Catholic Church, they have this thing they call the prayer of holy unction. And in that, they adopt what the Apostle John said, that we share in these things. Uh, we share in the prophets. We share in Jesus. We share in these things, and we can bring healing on earth. Now, maybe you're like Dan, and in the moment where you're in extremis, that you're having a life-threatening illness, you're wondering, where is God? Why did this happen to me? What is going on? You may be complaining, this isn't fair. I didn't deserve this. Or maybe you're the other side. You're saying, well, it's because of all the sins that I've committed. I do deserve this, and so therefore I need to suffer in silence. None of those thoughts follow Scripture. And let me be very plain with that. Your beliefs need to change so that you can believe the good news. The very first sermon that Jesus preached, change your thinking and believe the good news. And here's the good news. He has forgiven you of all your iniquities. That same body, that same blood, that same new covenant is for you. And it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter if you did it intentionally. It doesn't matter if you violated the commandment and you knew you were violating the commandment. His blood is sufficient. He covers you with that. He wants you to be with him for all eternity. He has done this voluntarily, and he did it on his own. You weren't even there, and he made a covenant with you. He said, I'm going to honor you. I'm going to save you. That same moment is the moment where he healed all your diseases. So here's his prayer. It's the same prayer that Dan heard. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, Jesus would not ask us to pray that if God's will was already being done. So all your complaints, why? Why is this going on? Why is this happening to my body? Is this somehow the will of God? No, it's not the will of God. God didn't cause this. He has provided so that you can be delivered from it. If his will is not being done and we have the authority and the power to say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, 
Well, look to heaven. Is there anybody sick? No, it's illegal in heaven. Under God's dominion, there's nobody sick. There's nobody poor. There's nobody lonely. There's nobody with mental illness. None of these things are allowed there. So we get to pray it into being as his ambassadors, as the ones that have received and have partaken of his divine nature. We get to have the privilege of coming to him as our father and asking for his dominion and his will to be done in our bodies today, not some far off time. So let's pray that, and let's receive that, and God will do what he's promised to do. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we come to you, and yes, your name is holy. We ask now that your kingdom would come, and your will would be done in our bodies as it is in heaven. We speak heaven and we declare heaven has drawn near to us right now. It's in our midst. Lord, I ask that heaven and your dominion would be in us. Shower us with your tender mercies, with your healing touch. From the top of our head to the soles of our feet, may we be healed and made whole now. In the name of Jesus. Terry Gunn's giving you something. Yeah, there's someone, you have recurring headaches. It's all a band up here around your head. God's just loosening that for you right now. That is someone that makes you feel like you have to frown all the time. It's so pressured. It's being released right now in Jesus' name. Just accept that. There's someone you ex have extreme pain in your heart right now. It's literally doubling you over. Your, you have your right hand over your heart asking, Lord, please heal this. In Jesus' name, be healed. May all the veins, may all the arteries, may the muscle be restored, everything be opened, everything flow clearly. No more constriction, no more restricted breathing. In Jesus' name, be healed. There's someone else you've fallen and you have uh, like broken pieces in your elbow. Oh, it's so painful. And God's healing that right now. Some of those things that there was no way they were going to go back together are going to heal. Your bone is growing now in Jesus' name. Someone else with problems on your left wrist, um, right above the wrist. Um, I don't know what it is. I think it has something to do um, with the artery or the vein. God is healing you right now. You're just feeling an anointing going through that entire arm. Just lift it to the Lord. He is healing you, restoring you now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. And we believe in prevailing prayer, so if you need prayer, we want to stand with you because here's the word from James. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. God bless you. We'll see you next week. If you need prayer or would like to partner with us, call the CBN Hopeline today. For viewers in Australia, call 02-79-08-0700. If you are in New Zealand, please call 04 700 or visit our website at cbnaustralasia.org. If you are in the UK, call 0300 561 700 or visit our website at cbneurope.com.